All right, guys. Esco Lola here coming to you with another um, 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 Dragon Age guide. Yeah, yeah, that's that's it. That's it. Dragon Age tutorial. So yeah, this looks like the Templar, and let's look at the abilities of the Templar. So um, there's a two two ways that you can build a Templar. One is what I use currently, which is focusing on Wrath of Heaven and Spellbirch. Now, Spellbirch alone is pretty useless. All it does is dispel hostile magic and barriers. Also, with the upgrade, it will deal 600% weapon damage if it dispels beneficial effects. But, you see that the Spellbirch is actually an Eldritch detonator, which means, which means it will deal damage regardless of the Spellbirch damage on enemies that are incapacitated. Alright, so how can we launch an Eldritch detonation? Well, Templars has, Templar has an ability called Wrath of Heaven. And this ability will deal 700% damage on demons, on demons only. But it will also stun them for 6 seconds and the stun will work on all enemies except arcane horrors and revenants and bigger enemies like the boss the commanders and such so once the enemies are stunned you you will use spell birch to deal damage and spell birch will deal shit ton of damage especially with the spell shatter there's a very good chance that you're gonna one shot enemies, especially on threatening difficulty. On perilous difficulty you probably won't one-shot them, but that doesn't really matter. You you would have done a lot of work and your allies can finish the finish the enemies off. Uh, I've also upgraded the Wrath of Heaven so it will deal more damage on demons and the stun duration is actually two seconds longer now. So that's very useful. Also, I have. You want to make sure that you pick this uh, this passive. Turn the bolt. Your expertise with the shield protects your from range attacks from the front. So basically, all the attacks that are coming from the front will be reduced by fifty percent. So this is the thing that will be keeping you alive more than shield wall. Because attacks that are coming from the front instead of your flank will be reduced and you kinda want that. I also use Bulwark which increases my maximum guard bonus. Quite useful even though guard is not really that powerful but it's good to have extra card. Shield wall with the upgrade. Well shield wall you get regardless but the upgrade. And the upgrade is not must but I wanna use the shield wall without being slowed down, so that's why I picked that up. Then I'm going I've gone for more armor bonuses. And I also have turned the blade, which will reduce all at all damage coming from the front. I've also gone for taking the biggest threat, 25% threat increase, so most of the mobs that are charging toward towards us will target me instead of my allies. Now the Templar does not have a taunt except for challenge, but challenge is a single target taunt and sometimes I use challenge I use challenge because challenge can be used to pull a pull big packs from range behind corners and shots. So that's pretty much the use of challenge to gain the initial aggro basically. And also yeah, if you don't wanna, you can also, instead of shield wall, you can use unbowed with the upgrade to generate guard. The unbowed will generate guard by 10% by per enemy which is nearby. And with the upgrade you will gain even more guard per enemy. But the, uh, the unbowed has a quite long cooldown. So the guard will be gone before your unbowed is refreshed. So 
that's why I don't like using Unbowed. I rather use Shield Wall, because Shield Wall can actually mitigate damage as well as generate guard for you. Now there are other abilities like Unyielding. If you have trouble surviving, you can go for this. Basically what this does is, instead of dying, you will become invulnerable for 5 seconds. And yeah, giving you another chance to survive, basically. Similar to Guardian Spirit. But instead of barrier, instead of getting a barrier, you will become invulnerable, literally invulnerable for 5 seconds. You will also get to pick up bodyguard, which whenever you activate bodyguard, you will transfer 50% of your allied damage to you. So you will, your allies will take 50% reduced damage, but that damage will be transferred to much you. All right. Uh, I could now, yeah, that's pretty much the build. All you have to do is use Wrath of Evan, and after that Spell Purge, and that's pretty much it. The I use Blessed Blade to buff my damage whenever I can, and yeah. Uh, you can also use, you can pick up, where is it? You can pick up Horn of Valor, and use it instead of Blessed Blades. Because Horn of Valor is actually better, better than Blessed Blades because it will give you a armor bonus as well. But because I use Moon Axe, Moon Axe is a unique axe that has a 10% chance to cast Horn of Valor on hit. So I will, I already have Horn of Valor without the uh, without the ability. So I pretty much have both Blessed Blades and Horn of Valor. And if you pick this ability. Lights in the shadow, um, your your attacks will reduce the cooldown on both Wrath of Heaven and Spell Purge. So basically, with this, you put down Blessed Blades, you use Wrath of Heaven, and you use Spell Purge. And depending on how many enemies your Wrath of Heaven and Spell Purge hit, uh, there it is very likely that the Spell Purge will refresh your Wrath of Heaven. So that's pretty good. Now, the other route that you could go, you could go for Payback Strike as well. But in Payback Strike, there's a lot of damage and it's, it's very good in my opinion. But it's not really as powerful as combining Spell Purge and Wrath of Heaven. So yeah, that's the Templar. Let's find us... Well, I, I might as well show you the accessories I use. I already told you that I use the Moon Axe, but I'm gonna show what accessories I use. I use the cooldown modifier amulet, reduced cooldown on both Wrath of Heaven and Spell Verge, a melee defense belt, staggering ring. I use the staggering ring because if I see enemies running towards my keepers or any other ranged, ranged party members, there's a good chance that my ring can actually stagger the opponent when I hit them uh, momentarily while well, stunning them for a split second. And sometimes it can save a life. And then I use the heal and kill ring in case I'll lose some HP, I have a chance to regenerate regenerate it back. So yeah, now let's find this uh, game. So we'll be right back. Alright, a Templar feet, game and I let's see what the Templar can do. Alright, sorry, I mean perilous game. An aging chateau in the wilds is the so we are facing the Venatory. Will interfere Venatory. But our people are ready. So I was quite lucky. Not Venatory are not really hard, but since I am playing Templar, I was hoping for demons because uh, demons are the easiest enemies f for Templar because Wrath Heaven of Heaven does damage to demons. And the Venatori tend to have a lot of archers, and the archers are the are very dangerous. Don't like archers. So here's the deal. Oh my god! I so here's the so here's the deal. You saw how the I used the Wrath of Heaven and then I used Spell Purge to deal damage. So that's basically the way I will be doing damage in this game, along with my normal melee attacks. 
And I also will be trying to... I will try to... What the... For some reason, it was tough for me to move. Kind of a strange movement. I... The... Yeah. Felt weird there, for some reason. So yeah, anyway, also I will be using me... What the... Yeah, there's a lot of lag. Yeah, I'll, I'll be using melee to pretty much block multiple melee attacks. So, to generate to generate guards so I can survive even more. Then I will use Blessed Blades to buff my damage. I do have Moon Axe, which has a 10% chance to cast Horn of Valor. So I will be using that as well to buff my allies and myself. Oh my god, this you see this, the lag is horrible. For some reason. I should always start my own perilous lobbies, but I'm not really. I I tend to be not I'm not patient enough to actually wait for people to join my game, so I like to quick match to join a pickup group and then hope that we get some that uh, the lobby leader is someone who actually has a good connection, so that. We won't be lagging, but looks like right now I'm lagging like hell and it sucks, but I just got to deal with it. Ooh. That hurt. The spell purge will actually dispel any magical effects the mages put out. And it will also dispel barriers as well, so it's useful in that as well. Block that attack. Block another attack if I can. What the? For some reason I received a lot of guard. I didn't block anything, so <laughs> I don't know, maybe I discovered a bug or something. Boom! Stone this and this dispel. Unfortunately the spell birch combo does not work on brutes. Because brutes cannot be stunned. I'm gonna help this guy out. Nice. Yep, that went well. The Templar really signs against demons. Because Templar can actually tank tank the demon commander without any problems so if I would have been facing demons here we would be killing them like normal but in the final part where the demon where is the demon commander I will I would be tanking him all by myself and let my other enemies to actually do the work and looks like I didn't have stamina there so Kinda unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, I tried to add, I tried to use spell burst, but <laughs> I ran out of stamina, and that happened because I used shield wall to protect myself from the initial hail of arrows that the archers were gonna throw throw at me. Could have done a lot of damage there if I was able to use spell burst. But that's basically how the Templar works. You can go the standard tank route, which would be going with Payback Strike. Because Payback Strike will actually deal a lot of damage as well in a small cone. Come on, hit me, hit me, hit me. Nice. You too, hit me. Oh, 
Boom. Break the door. I wanna go after you. Don't attack my allies. You see my staggering ring actually. Staggering the enemy. So as you saw right there, the the Venatori soldier was running towards the keeper. But I attacked him and my staggering procked stra staggering him so that he was stunned for a split second and he could not attack the keeper. So that's why the staggering ring is mine in my opinion is very useful, especially for for a tank whose main objective is to protect others. But right now I'm being actually quite a poor tank and not helping everybody. But I will be attacking everyone from behind and hopefully get some shit done. Nice, a lot of damage there. There's an assassin there. Not worrying about the assassin too much. That went well. I really like the Templar. In my opinion. Because of the AoE damage she has. But she's not as good a tank as say Legionnaire or Arcane Warrior because she doesn't have a taunt so to speak or a proper proper crowd control. Her only crowd control is the Wrath of Heaven which has a quite long cooldown it do and it doesn't last as long. While the Arcane Warrior has Pull of the Abyss which has the benefit of keeping enemies in place. It lasts longer and yeah. Also, the Legionnaire has taunt. The Templar has taunt as well, but the Templar's taunt is single target, so you cannot really tank everything. I'm gonna take full guard from this guy. Should be quite easy to kill this guy. Oh, come on. Don't you know who I am? I know. As you saw right there, I will I'll take little damage from the Arcane Warriors attacks because Arcane Horrors attacks because I am actually facing him. And because I am facing him I and I have the passive which reduces damage by 50% from attacks which are coming from the front. So basically try to keep your face towards the enemy pack to take reduced damage. And that can save your life. I don't like I don't like the archers because archers have a tendency to flank you or get or you will get flanked by them quite easily. That's why I'm not really really happy about the archers. I'm hoping that our Inquisition messenger won't actually die. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna Take the initial brunt of the arrows, then run here and dispel a birch. Well, I survived. Nice, I that went that now went perfectly. Do whatever it is you menials do. I'm late for the lady ambassador. And the only risk there is that you will actually run out of you will run out of stamina so that you can actually use the spell perch combo but luckily I had enough stamina and I only used shield wall for a split second to get the most guard that I can without expending all of my stamina 
and then use the Wrath of Heaven and Spell Purge. So I'm gonna actually go to I'm gonna go tank over here. Because then I can take on the the archers as well. I'm gonna try to give up give everyone in here. I'm also I also want to thank the boss. That's very important for me. Especially for me because I am the tank, so I should thank the boss. I'm gonna equip rock armor and regeneration potion. Oh, where the hell did that guy go from? Nice, there I got some guard back. The fucking stalker attacking everyone here. I want to keep the enemies as close to together as possible. Gonna pop my rock bar rock armor back on. Generation potion again. As you see, I'm using a lot of potions here because I don't want to die, basically. And you should never want to die. Ooh. The it's giving me the boss is actually giving me quite trouble here. Quite a lot of trouble here, but it's all good for now. The boss should be dead. Soon. Yes, there it goes. Boom, boom. And it was easy. Had to use pretty much all my potions, but... Yeah, that's what you gotta do. Especially if you wanna tank without... Without, without running away. I, I basically I wasn't I was, I really wasn't worried about um, dying or any of that. I was more worried about having to move away from the from the corridor because I wanted to keep all the enemies in the corridor to make make time for my keepers a lot easier. And I also managed to tank the boss pretty much the duration of the fight. So that was very important as well. And I actually did not do any bad. I received Immortal. Which means I didn't I didn't die a single time. Not bad points. So yeah, that's pretty much the Templar. So see you next time.